I know they break down a lot. I know most of them are covered in rust. I know the engines take a lot of maintenance. But there's so much about them that I don't know. that I'm completely intrigued by. There's so much character in these vans. It's as if each one of them has a spirit of their own. I know they're just machines, just a tool, but what a great tool, man. I have this dream. I'm on this dirt road. The sun is setting. The dust is kind of flying in the air. It's pretty hot outside. The windows are down. And I'm just cruising. And I'm in an old VW bus. It's not perfect. It breaks down quite a bit. I had to train myself how to fix it, but it's become part of who I am. And in that moment, even though I'm alone on the road, I'm not alone, because I'm with my buddy, my VW bus. I don't know where my bus is, but I know it's out there, waiting for me to restore it to grow together, to make some memories, to join my family. And so I've come today seeking wisdom from somebody who knows a lot more about VWs than I do. This person has worked with VW buses for many, many years, decades even. And I've come just to learn, to soak it in, to get as much knowledge as I can, to ask questions, and just to meet somebody with their own memories in a van. Welcome to this episode of Matt's Rad Show. Matt from Matt's Red Show here. Many of you guys know that I, for a while now, I've been kind of dreaming about a VW bus. I decided to take my dreams, put them into action, and to call up somebody that knows more about VW buses than I do. I found this guy here, his name is Jerry. He owns JAC Auto, and he's got a lot of VW buses. He also has a nephew named Jay, who knows a lot about VW buses, who owns a lot of VW buses too, so I've come to the right place to learn everything I can about VW buses today. So I'm just gonna talk to these guys, show you some of the buses that they've got on the lot here. I'm gonna try to learn what, it, what it's gonna take to, to, to um, well, I just wanna learn about VW buses today. I'm just here to learn, I'm here to soak it in, I'm here to, to hear any stories they have to tell about the buses, about the engines, about the frames, about anything and everything that goes with VW buses so that someday, hopefully someday in the near future, maybe a year or two, I don't know, maybe a couple years from now, um, I'll be more educated to make a, a good informed choice on getting a VW bus someday. So that's the dream, you guys. I don't have near enough money to get one yet, but I'm hoping that someday soon, if I save up enough money, I'll have a VW bus someday, you guys. So we're here on the side of the road. We're gonna go meet Jerry. We're gonna go talk to Jay, and we're gonna see a bunch of VW buses today, guys. So thank you for joining me on this episode of Matt's Red Show, and let's get into it. <laughs> this is Jerry. He owns this place. He's been working here for a long time and has many stories about Volkswagens. My definition of a Volkswagen bus is an under horsepower bread box. <laughs> 
father had a 57 Volkswagen panel van, no windows on the side, 36 horsepower. Uh, I learned how to drive in it. And that's probably where my first love came of driving Volkswagens, you know. He says, 36 horse, only takes a mile to get going. <laughs> if I had a bus, a VW bus, since high school, um, not the same one. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember having old split windshield buses with the little four foot section in the center that lifts up. Makes it easier to put your pants on in the morning, but uh, yeah, they, they, the, the pop tops are nice. If you have kids, it's a good place to put the kids up top, so. But uh, yeah, I've had a, one or two buses all the way through as far as they tend to grow on you, you like them. You keep them, you restore them. Home away from home, you can pull over anywhere and have home for at least for, you know, familiar uh, surroundings while you make your supper or whatever. And home away from home, basically. Oh, I remember a 71 camper bus I took out with two, my, I don't know if we were married then or not, but. We've been married now for 30 some years, so anyway, and then another friend, we went out to see the Devil's Tower in Wyoming. Mm -hmm. That's a nice drive. Cool. Mount Rushmore, etc. Volkswagen bus, you know, Mount Rushmore is at least second gear, and sometimes you'll see third <laughs> until you downshift to second again. <laughs> but that's how the hills are. Depends what you want as far as do you want an old bus like this bullet hole bus, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, I mean, this was fresh out of the farmer's field, and to be honest, and I'll date it someday. This will sound cheap, but I believe my nephew paid four grand for it, mm -hmm. and then had to have it towed up. And I know he spent a fair amount with us to put the rebuilt motor in, mm -hmm. make sure the tranny seems to be okay doing all the brakes, etc. Mm -hmm. um, he'll probably have mm, maybe 10 into it when he gets done, if okay. he does body work. If he doesn't do the body work, well, it's not that far from running and driving down the road as it is, so. Where's the bullet holes come from, any idea? Uh, I imagine it sat out on a farmer's field. Oh, yeah. And, because there's a triple A sticker on the back of it. Sure. The whole center shot out of it, like, uh -huh. Oh, can you hit the trip away? Well, eventually the trip away sticker isn't there anymore. But <laughs> you look on the front and you'll have bullet, some bullets in, but some bullets out. So some of them are outies. <laughs> <laughs> so what, so a shorty, so it's been shortened obviously. Three feet. And did, who does the shortening? Do you do, you do that? Or? I did that. You did that? Is that something a lot of Volkswagen bus people do or is it just more of a unique thing that you did? Or? Here's another one that I didn't do. Okay. Before I painted mine, mm -hmm. it could do a wheelie. Okay. <laughs> um, could do an easy three foot wheelie, but uh -huh. once I painted it and made it pretty, I didn't want to crack any of the Bondo oh, that was in it. Yeah. So, uh, but it can also make a U-turn in a Minneapolis alley. <laughs> That's always nice. So, they were just gonna crush it, so it found new life with me mm -hmm. you know shortening it then uh, making it custom and mm -hmm. that's cool I didn't realize they did that um, I mean the first thing it usually dies on them or if you'd want to buy a used one you want to definitely have a, a used car check done which we do with, without plugging too much on about a hundred dollars it checks it out most people say it's a lot better information than you kicking the tires um, but basically if you start on the engine, take compression test, they'll tell you if it's weak or not. You know, I mean, they may say, oh, it runs fine, and I've got a green one behind the shop here. It sounds okay, but when I went to take a compression test, one of the spark plug holes was all full of mouse nesting stuff. So now it has to come out just to get that out so I can, you know, check it out. But the other cylinder next to it had zero, so I'm figuring it probably needs a valve job, if not uh, total rebuild. More expensive when they break down to fix and stuff? Well, if you had there. a Mercedes and the motor pooped on, on you, I'm sure you'd spend three times more money on the Mercedes <laughs> mm -hmm. getting that fixed. Um, 
I mean, compared to economical little, you know, Japanese cars or vans, well, maybe they wouldn't be as much. But uh, my father-in-law, his timing cover leaks a little oil, and his alternator squeals like the bearings going bad. And I won't name the dealer, but it was a new Toyota place where he brought it and they gave him a $2,200 estimate for fixing those two items, which uh, I think is ridiculous. Uh, I don't know, maybe I don't know Toyotas, but I mean, for that same $2,000, you could rebuild a bug, bug mm -hmm. motor, you know, so mm -hmm. prices are a bit different, so. Yeah, I guess it all kind of depends. Yep. What are some of the things I should keep in mind as I'm looking for Rust. my bus? Like my pickup behind you mm -hmm. is pretty much a, it's got a little bit on the bottom of the doors where it's got a little rust. Mm -hmm. Very, very good original shape. Pretty much everything on them you can either buy a replacement for or have what's on there rebuilt. Okay. Uh, like this bullet hole bus may not look like a lot, but it's got a totally rebuilt 40 horse in it. It's got all new brakes in it, so. It still looks like a bullet hole bus, but it'll run nice. <laughs> it felt good that I was finally starting to learn more about Volkswagen buses, but it made me realize I had so much more to learn. <laughs> there he is. Green ones. <laughs> How's it going? Um, <laughs> I backpacked across Europe when I was six years old with this, and then it matches the colors. So nice. It's been in there for a while. Um, <laughs> cool. This is great. Yeah. Deluxe model with the stove. Uh huh. Uh, sink. It's a fridge, but I don't have the battery hooked up for it. Cool. I started working out here mm -hmm. when I was 16. I got my license and my first real mm -hmm. venture out of the neighborhood was to my uncle's here. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the summers I started working for him tearing apart beetles and then I really wanted one parting them out so taking the good parts off of them. This was in the 90s so mm -hmm. now kind of everything is saved. But yeah. then I really wanted one and we were parting out one. I'm like, why throw this one away? Why can't I have this one? And he said, if you put a rebuilt motor in this, do all the brakes, do all your work, you still have a rusty kind of pile. So look for something that isn't rusty. And now that I'm in the business of pulling these out of fields and having them restored, it is so much ahead of the game if you get something without rust. You know, that's an ideal world. You kind of have to buy what you can afford. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, they're getting worth enough so that you can make anything worthwhile even if it needs, if it's a split one of us, even if it needs 40 grand worth of metal work, it's still worth it because it's worth more than that when it's done. So. The 21 and 23 Window Deluxe Microbus Sambas. How much are, are those going for like 100 grand or something? More. More? Oh yeah, one of those, the 57, I sold for 160,000. Wow. That was for a customer. And then I had um, a 23 window of mine, I sold for less than that, and then a, a 21 window for 145 for a customer. Wow. That I had done to his specs. It was. Uh -huh. Through the restoration, about to paint, so he got to pick his colors. And okay. You want to disc brakes up front, and uh -huh. I have another one like that. Actually, a couple that are ready for somebody else to start funding the project. I can get it most of the way, but then it kind of makes sense to pick a buyer before you have the colors and stuff. Anyway. These are some of the buses that he owns here. Holy cow! That's a lot of buses. Can you tell me a little bit about this bus then, a little bit? This is a guy in Florida that was moving to Puerto Rico and called me up and said he had a bus he'd been working on restoring for his daughter, but they, she already was in Puerto Rico and he was moving there too, so. Mm -hmm. He had to sell it, so he said it has new paint, rebuilt motor, had it shipped up here in November, so the temperature change from Florida to Minnesota in November was such that some of the filler that was used in this 
it shrunk and cracked and so by the time it got to the shop that said that they would fix it for me, finish it rather, mm -hmm. uh, it needed more body work. So man, but restoring these things, even just this little trim that goes around the window, mm -hmm. for both sides it was... Well, first of all, they didn't sell it in this country, so there's a place overseas in England that sells it. Um, or maybe there was a place in this country, but it was 400 and some dollars, and so Jeez. I had a parts bus, and then I paid these guys to really carefully take it off the parts bus, but it, this bus is so nice that it didn't. it's hard to get them off perfectly, so mm -hmm. anyway, bought this new stuff from England, I guess. And okay. But it's just one tiny little thing, you know? yeah. it's like, it's kind of never ending. But it's coming along, it's gonna be a great bus. It's a weekender, which means that it has all the camping interior without the pop top, tin oh, cool. top camper, they also call them. Okay. What year is this one? 72. 72? So that means it has disc brakes. Oh no, it's a 71. So that's the, the last year of that upright engine, like I was telling you about. Okay. Um, and then it has disc brakes, so it's a pretty desirable year because people like the simpler upright engine from the same style as in a Beetle or Ghia okay. or a thing. Uh, and then disc brakes is nice. Uh, it has a power brake boost in this year as well, so it has some advantages and still maintains some of the old characteristics. Cool. Now, can you talk a little bit about the motors and how they're different from a normal vehicle? I mean, cool. Let it cool off. Well, what kind of engines do you got in here? Two liter. In 72, they went to this different flat style. All the way prior, they had had this upright engine. Mm -hmm. um, and then they went from a 1.7 liter, 1.8 liter, and this is a 2 liter, mm -hmm. so it has the most oomph. Cool. It's still not super speedy. Now how fast can it go? <laughs> I was going 75 on the way here trying to get here on time. Oh, really? <laughs> how long did it take to get up to 75? Uh, about 12 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a lot higher than that other engine that was in that green bus out there. Mm -hmm. Uh, and because it's air cooled, you have to make sure that everything is all super sealed up. Because if you notice, if you put your hand right through here, you can touch the exhaust. Okay. So that's super cooking hot, and you don't want to be circulating that super cooking hot air through the fan shroud blowing over the cylinders because it's not mm -hmm. going to cool and you overheat the engine and ruin it. As simple as that, just by not having your sheet metal tin in there. Uh -huh. There's a lot of little intricacies like that that you don't have to worry about the normal car because uh, antifreeze takes care of your cooling. But right. Um, so they're all air cooled. Yeah, up until the Vanagon. What year was that? Vanagon started in '80, okay. and then look to the comments on this video to see if I'm wrong. But is it '82 that turns into a water boxer? Okay, '83-ish. Okay, cool. Are they fairly easy to work on if you kind of learn them? Very. Yeah. Here's the distributor. So for timing, here's your bolt, and then you just move this distributor. If your full fuel pump goes out in these stupid today cars of today, you have a fuel pump that's stuck inside the gas tank of all places. So mm -hmm. I mean, this is you just have a ratchet and two extensions or an extension, and mm -hmm. take the fuel pump off, and for thirty-five dollars you got a new one. Um, it takes a whopping two and a half quarts of oil, so hardly any. Uh, so you have to be really careful about not running low on oil, because even if you're a quart low, you're about half capacity. Oh wow, but, that's cool. Yeah. How many horsepower are this typical? Uh, I think these are around 60. They started off, boy, there was 25 horsepower, I guess. Really? The really, really old ones, and 36 horsepower starting in 1953 or so again, people are really fanatics about these years, so oh, sure. you'll get a lot of comments. I get corrected all the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but off the top of my head, yeah, they, sure. they were 25 horse all the way through almost 1959 or 16, and they went to a 40 horsepower, woo! Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and then eventually made it up to about 60 or so. So, uh, But you know, they're really easy to put larger cylinders on and bore out, although when you bore out your cylinders, you get thinner walls and then if you're overheating you have less mm -hmm. metal to heat up so that can okay. certainly run into trouble but you can make them have over 100 horsepower and more I mean over a horse over 100 horsepower what kind of gas mileage do these things get typically 18 22 I don't know 17 16 22 okay 22s coming downhill with a tail end mm -hmm. probably out of the Going Rockies 50. or something mm -hmm. uh, they, uh, they aren't streamlined, <laughs> and they, they get pretty hot pushing a box down the road. But they are not like a new van where you can hop in sure. and hit the cruise and 
drive 70, 75 all day. Mm -hmm. but still for an RV, 18 miles a gallon is pretty excellent. Yeah, these are, these are our tips for road tripping. <laughs> Uh, yeah, two and a half quarts oil. You don't want to run it too low on oil. Uh, always have a f spare fan belt for at least 71 and earlier buses and that have the fl uh, upright engine in it. Mm -hmm. Newer than that, if you break a fan belt, you'll lose your gener alternator, but you won't lose your fan because it runs right on the back of the motor. As long as the motor runs, it has a fan. As you break a fan belt on an upright engine, like this motor that's behind Jay. Mm -hmm. It's backwards right now. If you broke the fan belt, then the fan in the back mm -hmm. won't spin and it, you overheat your engine. Ah, okay. In a jiffy. In a jiffy. Yeah. yeah. The generator light comes on as he turn puts it, it turn off the key close to the side. Close to the side. I've had people mm -hmm. say, my fan belt broke a couple miles up the road. I just drove it here to get it to you quick. Well, all that time you drove it with the fan belt broke, it's like running a radiator car with no antifreeze in it. It gets hot. Mm. They smell like toasters when they come. <laughs> oh, geez. Well, if you look at the spark plug rubber mm. rings and they're all drooped to one side, that engine's been hot mm -hmm. probably more than once. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so just know you're gonna have some issues there with that we, engine if that is yeah, the case. Definitely. They I, become mm -hmm. looser. As I was learning about these buses and these Volkswagens and the engines and what makes them go, what keeps them running, what makes them click, I began to realize that someday, even if I have a VW bus that's running pretty good, I'm going to have to do a lot more maintenance than I do now. Yeah, the maintenance that was required on these things, I have an owner's manual for Carmen Ghia from about 1960 or 59 or something and the things that they asked of their customers at the time, you know, it's like, here's how to take off your entire shifter level to lube it because you need to do that every once in a while and then you push it back together and it, you know, just explains to the average engineer or, or, or burger flipper or whatever, you know, it's here's how to do the maintenance on your vehicle. And then these days with just like the no maintenance. No maintenance. The customer doesn't want to do anything ever. I don't want to even bring it in for an oil change. So now they have cars that you don't even have to bring in for mm -hmm. an extraordinary amount of time for an oil change. But it, you know, culture has shifted oh, so much. Mm -hmm. So it's to keep them alive. Yeah. Going and mm -hmm. Now it's like. You mean I gotta check the oil in it? Yeah. Is it time to get a new car? Yeah. <laughs> Is the ashtrays filled? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just a real privileged entitlement in society and it's reflected mm -hmm. in the products that are sold. Mm -hmm. But paging through an old 60s owner's manual will take you back into really how impressive society and the, the people were back then. Mm -hmm. It was just common, well, maybe not common knowledge, but more expected that they would... Yeah, people were not afraid to get in there and you know get dirty yeah mm -hmm. and you know who would take their shifter off of their car nowadays you yeah, know right. you'd just be afraid that you're gonna have a thousand dollar bill by having it towed to the shop to have it put back together but mm -hmm. it's two bolts on something like this and the whole thing just comes off and then you lube it up and adjust the plate it tells you how to adjust it right in the owner's manual hmm. um, yeah it's it's impressive to see what was expected of society back then they were a very well engineered car mm -hmm. more than yeah. money they were built to last. They, yeah. Yeah. So did they uh, build these buses kind of with that in mind that their customers would be working on them pretty regularly? Especially the or? early ones. All the uh, whole Volkswagen line. You know, you have to grease the front end. You have to do your own valve adjustments. Well, you don't have to, but there were there was maintenance required. You couldn't just ignore it and drive it for 20,000 miles and mm -hmm. not ruin something. Hmm. So did they make it? try to make it pretty easy for the Very, customer then to yes. be able to do those things? Yeah, and everything is laid out step by step in the owner's manual cool. uh, with the owner shown in a suit or you know, or a <laughs> sure. lab coat. Uh -huh. and it was cool, it reminds me of the guys working at Abbey Road Studios were technicians, they were engineers, they wore lab coats and same within these well, owner's I, manuals. I told hmm. them it reminded people on chips. The TV Garage, show? The TV show, yeah. Chips. Yeah. They had a spotless clean yeah. work area where they yeah. worked on their <laughs> yep. motorcycles. And <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah. not very true for the normal yeah, shop. Not exactly mm, yeah, especially true these for the days. matter. <laughs> 
sitting back watching this uncle and nephew talk about their love for Volkswagen buses was a lot of fun for me. These guys have so many memories, and I think that's what I'm after. I want to create some memories of my own. Well, what's the story besides the, the short buses here? When did they start? Never. People start doing that. Oh, people, yeah, yeah. In the 80s, maybe even the 70s. Just for fun? Or make them do wheelies and stuff? Or? It's a polite way to put it, I would say, <laughs> just for, I don't know, I can't say anything polite. <laughs> but people that's don't a, have too much time on their hands. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. and then look, this is, remember that 15 window that I told you that he parted out? You know, 20 years ago, this somebody made out of this restored is a hundred thousand dollar bus. Oh wow! Um, you know, so I mean, and it, the forklift picked it up and smashed it here, and it, I mean, it's been, Jeez. you know, it's a, quite a project. But you know, if you put 80 grand into it, you still can <laughs> have something in the end. But yeah, not only did they ruin a bus, but they ruined a very rare model to walk through, meaning it has two bucket seats up front rather than a bench, which is also a rare oh. option. I don't know, I got to pick both these up on it that are on the trailer at a junkyard, hoping to restore them. The front floor isn't all rusted out. Uh, needs, these are called dog legs. Mm -hmm. They sell this piece and it welds right there and that'll fix all that. The dash is uncut. It still has the ID plate. This shows that it was manufactured in December. That's 12 of 59. Meant, but it shows it was green on green. So this is mango green and this is a lighter green. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, I got a good deal on it, as you can guess. What's yeah. a good deal? 400 bucks. And the roof is worth a couple grand, which I need, and I'd rather not put, but I don't wanna, I don't, you know, I, at the time I thought, well this is a good frame and a good roof, I'll restore that 15 window. But these mango buses are so beautiful. Also, they have a caramel interior. They're like the only non-deluxe that has all the deluxe options, like a white steering wheel, and. Uh, chrome trim on the door panels and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I just can't bring myself to cut this one up, even though it looks like this, to restore that. When there are, you can find frames out there, you can find roofs that have already been chopped. And mm -hmm. then, you know, if I can save this, it's one more family that gets to enjoy a bus yeah. in the future, if we all live long enough. <laughs> no, what is that heater there? Or what's that on the floor? Yeah, it's called a heat log. A heat log? I think I've seen that. It's just a distribution system. The heat comes from the engine through a tube and then that has slits cut in the bottom of it to distribute the to heat. To blow all that heat out of your Yeah, body, you know? at a million miles an hour to cook you up in a 90 so. degrees in no time. In other words, that doesn't work for our swear word. <laughs> so you can't turn that on or off then. It's just the heater's always on. Yeah, you start the motor or you shut it off. <laughs> yeah, well, it does, one of these is a reserve valve and one does pull a cable that pulls at, at the heater box which opens up a flap. Okay. No. Oh yeah. Yeah, so the so one is choke. Oh one is reserve. Uh-huh. And then this is the heater. Yeah. Okay, so you turn it on just like an old like an old oil heater. Yeah, it works by cables. Okay. Uh, how many buses you got on site here? I have uh I suppose we could count them. <laughs> I got about eight. But yeah. Here, but mm -hmm. probably a six. sure what to expect when I showed up today, but after hanging out with Jerry and Jay, I can finally start to visualize what it's going to take to one day bring one of these buses into my family, and I can finally start to see myself behind the wheel. I think 
that's all I have time here for today, but you can be sure that I'll be back to record some more VW buses, to learn more about VW buses, so someday, hopefully, in the next two years here or so, we'll have a VW bus of our own for Matt's Ride Show, and we'll take road trips, and we'll do all kinds of cool stuff with it, so thanks for joining me on this episode, guys. The dream has just begun. The dream has just begun. I can feel it. I'm super excited about VW buses. I'm super excited I got to learn so much today. So hopefully you guys learned something too. If you're out there, if you want a VW bus, if you're excited about it, leave some comments below. We can help each other out. We can figure it out. Um, cool makes, cool models, ideas. Just comment it up, you guys, and we'll do this together. We'll get a VW bus together, you guys. So, <laughs> And who knows, maybe I saw the one I'm gonna purchase on the lot here someday. Maybe it's one of these, who knows, I don't know. Anyways, guys, thanks for joining me on this episode of Matt's Red Show. Love you guys, stay rad, keep dreaming, and we'll see you soon. Okay, bye. Ha, ha, ha.